Well, good evening. Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting held this August 11th at 2021 at 6.05 p.m. We're meeting in the main meeting room, Deerfield Municipal Offices at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Governor Baker's June 16th, 2021 Act extending certain COVID-19 measures adopted during the state of emergency, including the extension of the remote participation provisions of this March 20th, 2020 executive order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, uh, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technical problems interrupt the virtual broadcast, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public will, with participant uh, interest in any specific item on this agenda, should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield uh, municipal office with remote participation details listed. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. Passcode is 570012. The dial-in number is 312-626-6799. Meeting attendees should mute, mute their phones to star six on landlines unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Now call the meeting to order. Thank you. Thank you. Um, this evening we have a, uh, a couple of appearances. Um, the first one will be with Lou and Annie. So if you want. And Annie Lee. Annie Lee's here too. Hey. Yeah, Annie Lee. Oh, Annie yeah. Lee. And it Hi, appears Annie. that <clears throat> Lou and Annie are just coming, so maybe if I could ask yeah, you to move on to. Oh, they're there. Oh, excellent. Yeah. <laughs> you can come on up. Lou and Annie, yeah, why don't you come up, up and sit in the chair? Hi, everybody. Hi. Hi. So if you want to introduce yourself. Yep. So I'm Annie Curtis. I'm a social worker and resident of Deerfield um, dip, uh, on River Road. I'm Lou Vincent. I'm a resident of Deerfield. Um, oh, right. Oh. You can't hear me. Lou Vincent, Deerfield to... resident, oh, right. um, co-founder of the Deerfield Inclusion Group. You actually need to put the mic down on the... On the yeah, that'll be okay. Oh, it'll oh, it'll oh, pick oh, you up. It's broadcasting through there. I see. Yep. And Annalee. We're getting better each meeting. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Annalee Wolf, Anna Wolf Cool, Annalee Wolf Cool, colleague of Lou and uh, Annie, and a number of others who have been really interested in addressing these um, issues, uh, mental health issues in Deerfield. And I live on Mountain Road. Okay, hey, we turn the floor over to you. Sure. Um, so just. You know, for anyone who might be listening in, just like a very short recap of why we're here today. Um, so we're part of a group of citizens who has been doing a lot of work around researching what other communities are doing to address the mental health needs of residents. Um, we are a group of both citizens, but also mental health professionals with our own experiences um, in the field and then just as people sort of working in the community or being in the community in various capacities. So it is sort of a multidisciplinary group of folks. Um, and one of the things uh, that we came across as a very interesting resource that communities are implementing is this idea of a municipal social worker. Um, and we talked a little bit about that. And um, one thing that you guys tasked us with as we walked away was really coming up with a solid proposal of what type of profession would be best for Deerfield to meet the needs. Um, so we have a proposal for you, um, but I want to be clear as we sort of talk about these things, the 
sort of positives and negatives of what we're proposing. Um, we also know that there is no one magic fix for all of this, and it, these things can be very complicated. So we spent a lot of time, like a lot of time, hashing out differences between different types of professionals who could best address the needs of the community. Um, so we will get to that. Um, I just want to recap very briefly kind of what we see as the need in the community. Um, we talked a little bit last week about statistics. Um, nationally, there's been a 300% increase in mental health um, symptoms that everyday Americans are reporting. Um, it, was, it was tough before the pandemic, but the pandemic cer certainly amplified um, folks in being under a ton of stress. We all um, have our own stories of what that looks like, both before the pandemic and during the pandemic and currently. David, you shared a really um, poignant story that actually brought me to tears, and I just want to thank you in person for sharing that story. This is an issue that affects so many people in our community, and I know that you all even maybe received letters. I know Carolyn had this stack of letters of professionals in the community working, saying how much need there is and how there's a lack of providers, and then there's a lack of connection to providers, which are sort of twofold. Um, so those are the two themes that we're seeing in the community. There's not enough mental health providers and there's not enough people to get people hooked into services. One of the um, things that we also did as a group that I just want to make sure is clear is that we did connect with others in town government to get their perspective on what the needs were. So we did meet with um, representatives from the police department. We met with some folks from the school, school adjustment counselors. Uh, we had a brief sort of uh, conversation also with the senior center and all of them across the board are seeing a huge need to connect people to services but also um, to ensure that there is some sort of mental health component to that as a preventative service so um, what we're seeing at least from their perspective is there's an extra strain on town services because folks aren't getting what they need so maybe the police are interacting with folks who wouldn't necessarily have to interact with them if they had some of these preventative services in place. For sure. So that's like a long-winded, a uh, little more information that I was going to provide, but I just wanted to contextualize this as we go into the proposal of what we're suggesting. Mm -hmm. So as a group, we still believe in order to meet all of these needs, both connecting people to services and addressing mental health needs, that a municipal social worker is hands down the best option in an ideal world. Right. So a municipal social worker is the person who can address both, both micro level intervention, which is therapy, connecting folks to services. Um, they're the most qualified to do so, but they can also participate in helping guide the town in some policy initiatives, grant writing, and some of those more macro level sort of um, drivers that the community may need assistance with, including disaster response. Um, we recognize after speaking with other folks that there's a lot of challenges to getting something like that through in a reasonable amount of time and people need help now. Right. So we hear that and you guys maybe when I'm finished you can sort of talk about that. We still would like to see that happen sort of in the long run and in the big picture because we still believe that that is the best option to meet the needs of our community. Um, however, what we are formally proposing is something a little bit different in an effort to get something done as soon as possible. So um, we had a meeting with Allie, Van, and Ellen, okay. Yeah. Wanted to get it right, yep. um, who's the director at the Community Health Center in Franklin County. Um, and we believe um, that going the community health worker route could be a more feasible option to start right away. So there are differences between a social worker and a community health worker, yep. which we actually sent you very a very that. That helps a lot. detailed outline right. that was color coded around <laughs> what a social what it might might cost um, and then what a community health worker would be doing yep. so um, we believe a community health worker could 
sort of in collaboration with the community health center um, could provide the town with a with a great referral source for all levels of government to start hooking people up with some much needed services. This is a person who who probably wouldn't be able to provide mental health support. Mm -hmm. um, however, could it be helpful in expediting, really connecting people to those resources? Yes. Um, it would certainly be a cheaper way to go in terms of the town, sort of a lower buy-in. Um, and it would be a great way to start collecting data on some of the things that we need, not only for to sort of establish what, what, is the, what is the exact need, like what are we seeing in terms of, you know, how many referrals are we getting? Um, how long is it that these referrals have to wait for therapy? That's kind of one of the big things that this will not touch in terms of getting people that support, but we could at least start connect, collecting that data. Um, and, you know, I think the other positive of a community health worker is that they're connected into the, um, the health center. So there are some health specific resources there um, that will be sort of built in and this person would be supervised by a collection of other community health workers. So it is an established system um, that we think could be very successful to get us started. Right. But we do want to be clear about the differences, yeah. um, that it, sure. it certainly has a lot of, but there's sort of some other things that we're going to be missing that we would still like to continue working on as a community to address those in the future. Right. right. You know, um, I'm, I'm torn because I, I understand that this model is really great and, and we do have the SIG grant for one more you know year. This person could at least do some work with the senior center. Um, but the reason why I'm, I'm torn is because I really, you know, the social work, we, we can get data from this. So that, mm -hmm. that's good because we don't have data. We just have anecdotal. Yeah instances and I can say that there is a need but you know it's like oh you know I don't really know enough to tell you you know what what exactly it is but the, the thing is with the social worker I know the social worker can be sustainable in the long run because it can be billable and we can be giving real services and so I know we should get started and it, it is fairly cheap to start especially we have the SIG grant already in the bank and we don't have a person. So the person can work, already start working with the seniors. And, and, and the seniors have been so shortchanged in this pandemic. And they're, they are so much more, um, I, I don't want to say more depression or, but there's just more stress. And now this variant is coming back and it's clear that people can get sick through the variant. And so people now, are, again, are starting to lock down. And, and I'm already hearing it. Um, that they're very concerned. And we've got to re redo our services to make sure the senior center is getting to our seniors again and keeping them safe. So this going forward with this proposal makes so much sense. We have money from, you know, ARPA money from the government to do COVID kind of thing. So this makes total sense. It's hardly any money out of our pocket at the moment because between the SIG grant and the ARPA money. But I just am so afraid that if we go this route, it will be so easy not to shift into the social worker thing, which I think is long-term services that we can give our community and that is needful and it is billable in the long run. It's just going to be a lot more work to set up. Um, so do you think we can get enough data to figure out how to do the social worker within a few months? Because I want this to be happening for the next budget year. Because we have two things of money coming in. We have, we're getting half of it now, and we get half of it at the end of the year. And our budget process to be spent in the following right. fiscal year. So we could do something for the following fiscal year and front end it and then be able to bill. But I, I'm just not sure of the transition. Should we buckle down and try to sort out the social worker or should we 
do this community worker and then keep focusing in on the social worker to get that sorted out for the next budget year? Um, I mean, Annie might respond after I respond, but I think one of the issues that the community health worker solves in this moment is that it could take a long time for us to get a social worker. Right. Um, and, you know, so that is one thing, like social workers you know, are physically, hard to come oh, oh, okay. like just, there, okay. are, there are organizations who are desperately trying to hire social workers right, right now. They're hard to get. So that is like, that's a logistical, that might be like a challenge. And the, then the second thing about this community health worker, which meets the need right now also is they would have the supervisor capacity thing all set up already. Right. Like, so the community health center would be their supervisor space, and that's already established. So although we, we envision a social worker being, like that being embedded into our community in a way that works, we don't have that full vision of what that's going to be yet. So even though I also really believe a worker is, for many reasons, I mean, better qualified and makes a more equitable wage. And, you know, there's, there's things that the are going to be able to do that the community health worker can do. But a community health worker would be hands and hearts in our community really helping right now. And I think that it would be a win. More immediate. Yeah, more immediate. Now, I, I think that makes sense, too. I do think, Carolyn, I, I understand it's easy to kind of like, okay, we did that. And then it just kind of rides there. But I think that it does make sense to, to, to focus, take that year or several months as, as we get this up and running to gather that data, what are the needs, and then work on that background infrastructure. You know, is, is it another entity like that versus a, a town employee that has to be managed and, you know, uh, overseen versus, you know, hooking up with, like we're doing with the police departments in the, in the several towns, and, and this entity here, I mean, I think it's worth researching that and figuring out how to do that, and they may have more pull to pull to find a social worker than just a town kind of hunting for something and figuring out the infrastructure of how to manage when we have no clue how to do that. But I, but I do think it's important to get going and getting that help immediately yeah. in, into the community you know, the anxiety is off the charts right now with the, oh, no. the Delta variant coming back. Mm -hmm. I mean, on top of the trauma of a year and a half, you've got this whole thing where everyone is just, like, exasperated by it. Casey, I have a question on the SIG grant. SIG grant goes to June of 22, right? Yes. Do we know, do we have any information about how the new grant I, they're doing away with the SIG grants. There's yes. no more SIG grants. They're not handing them out automatically. They're making it competitive and they're opening it up right. to all 351 towns. I asked that this afternoon on my call with the SIG guy, the grant court, the new grant. So do they know how we can see? One of the reasons I want to make sure that we position ourselves, because I I, I don't think the needs of the seniors are going to go away, but I'm but certainly that means there's also you know there's a huge need with our kids and stuff like that. So. <laughs> I, I feel like if we can position ourselves with a partnership with the community health center, and I mean, you have to build your story mm -hmm. to be competitive and to win a grant. And so again, I think this is, can be sustainable through the grant process. What we can't pick up for billable services by the way we structure our story. And so in the back of my mind, as we're doing this, part of this is we need to build our story. We need some data. We need the outreach happening so that we can get this in because the SIG grants, I'm sure, will be out in March time frame, the SIG replacement grants, not the SIG grants. They're, like Casey said, they're not going to be automatic like we have had in the past. So what we need to do is come up with something that will make us competitive. And I think the partnership with the Community Health Service, mm -hmm. the partnership with all our partners, you know, the schools, the police, the you know, whatever we can build, we can build our story, and we need to be competitive to, to make this happen. And um, and we we aren't delivering services to seniors now, and we need to. And I I I'm that's our my number one thing, especially if we end up people being isolated again this coming fall and winter. We've got to come up with some kind of alternative outreach than we had, some kind of program. So again, we've got to be competitive. You know. 
I will say one thing when I talked to Adam Frank today. He said to me that they'll start working on those parameters in probably the next month and a half because they want to push the RFP out in late fall. Okay. Yes. And so it'll come through the, stru the grant structure that we have now, yeah. and we'll get a notification, and then we'll have to see how complex it is. Right. Um, it may be, if they do something, it may be worthwhile to pursue something regionally because they may look more favorable. Well, it is already regionally because yeah. it is it's Sunderland right. and Waitley. Right. So we our have a huge, that has always been mm -hmm. our, um, are to our advantage because we already do outreach to Sunderland and Waitley as well as Deerfield, so as part of our senior center. That so be attractive to so them this, because this looks like it's going to be right. positioned like a community compact grant. Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, again, we're going to be an innovative and a model and a pilot, all this kind of stuff. So mm -hmm. if, if you can help us make sure that we're transitioning correctly, I mean, I'm, I'm very willing to support the start with the community health work. I think for the here and now, this makes a lot of sense. And I think I even yeah. since the last time we talked, which was like a month ago with the Delta variant, yeah. Yeah. our community was already in crisis and I'm getting goosebumps here. I think we're headed for more right. and this, is, this can happen really soon. And I think that I think we continue to look at um, and we've done a lot of this research, yeah. benefits of having a municipal social worker versus one with an agency, possibly regionalized, which makes a lot of sense, right. and sort of like spend the next three months, four months, connecting with other communities and figuring out, is this something that we can all chip in for and have, you know, a full-time person eventually. Wow. And I think you could, you will use all of it. You will use 40 oh, hours of a social worker and 20 hours of a right. community health worker. And actually, group. that's a great sort of model mm -hmm. to, that, that will support one another. It's, it's sort of the end game if we're thinking about this yeah. sort of community health worker and then eventually having like a regionalized full-time social worker for our community. I think that could be really beneficial. If, can I just ask you, because poor Casey just does not have the bandwidth. Could you continue to work with her and, you know, keep supporting her with this information and gathering the information with this in mind that we want to move forward with ultimately the social worker and we want to be in a position to get a grant sometime, I would say we'd be writing a grant in December-ish mm -hmm. and that would be perfect with our budgeting uh, process as well so that we'd be, you know, looking at next year to start this. Yeah, we, but however, I mean, I just, this is like another whole workload for Casey. So if you don't mind working with her, then again, I would really be supportive of this. Yeah, and if we can, I mean, we have contacts in other communities, yeah. but whatever sort of like government contacts to sort of like, if we're thinking about the long game of December writing a What, we're, what we have to think about is the story. So okay. if you can keep it in the back of your mind, yeah. the grant story. Mm -hmm. How are we going to position our community to be competitive? So you all, because you are in the field, you're talking to other towns and governments and, and seeing other right. what other people are doing. So we need to come up with a proposal that will make this happen for us and, and, and some kind of, you know, innovative. We're very good about being innovative here. We, we, that's how the ambulance service got going. That's right. how we, the Mosquito District got going. We were the lead community for the Mosquito District. We now have 23 <laughs> communities in the Mosquito District with potentially 30 by the end of the year. So, I mean, they're, they're, we do a lot with, mm -hmm. with not very much, but we, I, I feel like it's such a serious need for our community going into the fall. So I, I really want to get started on this. Yeah, um, you know, my viewpoint on it is if we can get a community health worker going as soon as possible, start collecting the data and establishing, you know, what our real needs are with data. Uh, but the problem I have with a community health worker is if there isn't a good liaison from them to more advance, because the community health worker is going to come across things that they just can't handle. And they've got to have the, the ability, even if they start tomorrow, they've got to have the ability to be able to refer it to somebody 
if they see somebody in crisis, which I understand is a major concern. You know, I got about everything wrong with me that I can possibly have. And I was just told that my, you know, I scheduled a doctor's appointment two months ago for, for August. Now they just said it was canceled. So um, it's like, and this is just a regular MD. Yeah. And there's a lot more of those around the social workers in this in Franklin County. So it's just, you know, that's my biggest concern is people not, you know, we, we identify that people need help, but we can't get them help. I think that's where the liaison to the health right. a lot. Yeah. Like as far as matching services and getting like in-home family health care, matching people to insurance. The community health worker can do these things. They can yeah. have, you know, home visits, family home visits for senior health care if they need it. Or right. they are like this is their their niche is finding out like which local organization is gonna help which individual or family. Yeah. So they're it's like a broad spectrum service, whereas the mental health provider, which our community needs, Retarded. is going to provide target mental health. The community health worker is going to say, okay, this is a family who's got a teenager in distress. I need to match them with the appropriate therapist, yeah. and that's what they're going to focus on. You know, or there's a senior who needs, you know, in-home care and to hook up to how to get, you know, ramps put at their house. Right. And that's what they're going to, you know, they're going to focus on these, like, broader things rather than just the mental health. So the two... We really like we have this together real vision of these two things happening together and being like very so, cohesive. And Allie's as a comment, David, I had a conversation with Allie about this for a while ago, and Allie really has through their program they've been working with the corrections office. Mm -hmm. They've they've sort of gotten through some of this because the outreach over at Franklin County Correction Center is very broad. So they really have sort of dug into some of those places that they need to find assistance so, from what she said. Well, rather than worry about the SIG grant, because money, we can use the SIG grant as we, if, if needed, but because that involves the other two towns. I think we focus on our ARPA funds. Uh, I was just going to say, this is very small amount of money. Great. If we could just allocate, I would make a motion to allocate the money from the ARPA funds to get started. Should we do that? We should have a little bit of a planning yeah. process around using the ARPA fund. Um, I did get a indication from Adam Frank at SIG, or Elder Affairs, that as long as we structure this in a certain way, he doesn't think it would be a problem to use the SIG money. Oh, I know, but we have to go. We should go through the boo, and we should figure out how right. we need. So we need a proposal. Yes. Yeah, so so that's the piece. So now that you've talked to the board, and the board's talking back. We need a proposal to take to the BOO because this outreach coordinator function goes through the senior center, which the operational arm is the board of oversight of all three towns. And Trevor's the member that represents Deerfield. There's two other members. So we wanted a place for us to bring this up at their last right. meeting. So we do need to sort of give it a little, give them but a we, Yeah, but we know we're going to get ARPA funding. Uh, I mean, the ARPA money is coming. We already have some of it. And... So my thought is it's only eighteen thousand dollars. We can sort out the SIG grant. The SIG grant is thirteen thousand, and we can figure that out in the next couple months. Much of that is going, you know, how much seniors are actually getting, mm -hmm. how much. Maybe it's a so it's a it's a portion of that or whatever. But what I'm saying is let's not. I mean, it will take another month of meeting right. to get the SIG grant sorted out. Well, so why don't if we could just say we're going to. Mm -hmm. Put aside eighteen thousand of the ARPA money for this, well, and then whatever we use from the SIG grant would, would of I, course, would be left. And what I would like to do is, is to task uh, Casey to touch base with Allie and just have that quick meeting. And Allie, you know, through oh yeah, well we Casey, have to Allie we have to, to allocate find out what that right. Vote, is we have to make a commitment of funding is it, though. Is it right? Mm -hmm. But so I just want to make sure. Contract, we have to have funding. If the board that. is interested in allocating ARPA funds, then I think we don't put a number on it tonight. Right. We do exactly. it oh, yeah. Day. I know. That's what we would like to Correct. do. Correct. 
And if there are other funding sources available, we can Fine. make an adjustment right. later. No. Exactly. But I, I wanted you to go forward. FEMA yet for towards? No, I, I spent an hour and a half in email doing that today. I'm trying to remember the acronym of that one. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, <laughs> but there's there's probably money left in that one that we might so be able to take. So Act, we need to. Cares. There we go. Cares Act is the one that that the state is yeah. is working on that coincides. It works with FEMA. CARES Act is more specific. CARES Act is more specific. ARPA is more wide open. They're making yeah. a process to do the mental health element of ARPA. I remember reading it, but I haven't gone back and read the details yet um, because we weren't at that place yet. Mm -hmm. So, did we get I, we get information from FEMA yet? We did. Oh, they're going to give us the count. So the county allocation, the town allocations yes. that were supposed to go through the county are coming directly to the town. But in fifty. In fifty. No, no, no. That's from the ARPA money. Did you? Right. We get. Did our FEMA grant it hasn't list? come in? Oh. So, so we have, we have. Are you talking about the stormwater thing? No, the CARES Act. Okay. We have money left over in the CARES Act we if the some. FEMA money comes through. But that's what I wanted to tell you. We have some, but we also have to get the inspection permitting software up and running, and we may have to use those the CARES Act money to do the website. So okay. that's part of the issue, and we are still struggling with that. It's just right. an ongoing I know. try to figure out so all the stuff. you have heard nothing about the FEMA? I, think I we did, actually. So they reduced our allotment. We want to go back and talk to FEMA to see if we can get that allotment put back up because FEMA, FEMA warned us they might, and then they didn't tell us. They didn't confirm it, and so FEMA reviewed what the project request was and said, well, wait a minute, we think there's $14,000 difference here. We want to figure out what you – what happened. So we're going to set up a meeting with them. So tomorrow. what's the total that they've approved so far or are they going to approve? That's, that's what changed. Between okay. MEMA and FEMA it changed and they didn't, I didn't hear about it until our new MEMA rep got in touch with me today. Oh. This is, FEMA is really it's a nightmare. I know. It's just so I'm, not trying, I'm not trying to throw like, make this any more complicated because based on what I just like witnessed, this is, you know, it's not cut and dry. Oh, right. um, you know, I, heard Carolyn say that seniors are incredibly underserved and I agree with you and I you know I'm not sure I follow where the outreach worker money will get lobbed into this and is this going to be the same thing is it are we going to try to keep them separate so seniors still have like you know that's maybe the question that we take to the board. well it depends right. on what the yeah. needs are I feel like the needs are going to overlap based on my interaction with the senior community in this past year I think the needs are going to overlap with the so, what the social worker can do. And the outreach that the SIG grant pays for, the social worker could do some of that, if not all of that. And it's, a, and it's more of a beefed up person than we've had in the past, you know, more uh, qualified in the sense that they're more aware of all the services that are out there. So I think our seniors are ultimately going to be much, much better, and if it's a nice a person that, you know, the community health center seems to have really nice people working for them that are very capable, very empathetic, very good, good quality people. I think people, I think this, our seniors are going to be thrilled and we'll be working with them pretty well. So I think ultimately I feel comfortable that the SIG grant parameters will be met and they'll met, be met in a, in a way that's really, um, you know, it's going to be much better quality than we've had in the past. But um, I don't know because, I mean, it's, when again, I we... Sorry, if because of the need is so great, I'm, I'm worried, and I think maybe what you're saying, and, and this is my concern, is that we're, we're now uh, limiting, again, this one person I know. has I know. Le more to do with less, and, and I'm thinking, like, leave the SIG alone, let's figure out... Yeah. get that person going with outreach and then focus on the, use the ARPA money for this specific. I, I think it's cleaner. I think it's cleaner to do yeah. the ARPA. And if there's any reimbursement, we can sort it out with the right. big grant as right. we go. Exactly. And I think, yeah. but I think I'd love to ask Casey just to touch base with Allie, get that, get a, a structured scope from yeah. her. I know we have the, the one from, um, It'll be similar, but we yeah, it'll be similar. But just see where the numbers lie, and kind of then just kind of get back to us, so we can then. But do you want a motion for that, Casey? You know, it would be helpful that, and the reason I say a motion is because I want you guys to just confirm that you want us to 
begin this program through the ARPA funds. If supplementary yes. funds or other town funds are available, that's fine. Exactly. Yeah, I would make, I make motion. that motion. And then I would second that and, and in that motion to also go, um, you know, to start the yeah, process. I remember my motion. To start the pro process. To start the process with ARPA money and not convolute it with all the other funding. But there will be, I'm sure, money from SIG grant, or CARES, no, CARES, or yeah. whatever. Whatever leftover CARES money there is. But I, I don't want to worry about that now. If we just say some of our, our ARPA money is a commitment that we're using that, then we can move forward. Because we right. can't move forward unless we appropriate the money. And right. I would like, you know, sort of start that conversation with Allie so that we, she could report back to us on really what, you know, what our plans are, what the data we're going to gather is, you know, kind of really lay out those tasks scope of work so we know that what we're well, I, getting, again we're I, I want to be very clear and help fill that story for the long term I want to be very clear my ultimate goal is to really get the social worker so we need to build be building our story which is what I want this person to be catch you know we've got to be we should be watching the data to make sure the data will reflect a story that we will make us competitive Yep, and we, oh, so one of the, one of the things sort of as a, as a side note or one of the recommendations we made was, you know, we're sort of unofficially a group of citizens who are helping to sort of like push this process along and do research and do whatever we can. We're happy to continue doing that and we'll be involved no matter what, but maybe consider some sort of more official like advisory. You know you have to post to do that. Yeah. Or so well we can we can we're open to whatever we don't want to make it more complicated. So if it's if it's just like yeah. citizens on an advisory capacity as we are doing now, then that's fine. We'll continue okay. to do that. But we would like a connection to Deerfield we're, to Alley that is citizen based somehow and participate in the I, I think we can say that we're working with you. How about a working group? A working, a working group, group of Emily, Lou, and Annie is enough. Well, and let's let's and that way we're not and see what kind of yeah. you know, it's beneficial okay. and they, can, they can work okay. with that That's, with them. We're trying to get a parade committee for the 350th that doesn't have to have postings and that doesn't have to have minutes because all you want uh -huh. is to get together you and volunteer work. community group. Volunteer community group. That's so this is why <laughs> we're trying to just make sure this happens because you get bogged down with postings and minutes. But it's not that we don't want to do that. Right. No. I mean, we can, it, as long as it case. goes through this select board. Yeah. This is, should be enough. Yep. And so. I'll second your motion to move move ahead with the ARPA money to initiate the process. Oh, I thought you already did. I don't think I did. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I did? Yeah. Well, okay. I wasn't sure. We were both I wasn't sure. there. It's been too many back yeah. and forth, so. so. Uh, good. Okay. So I'll, I'll be quiet. All right. Okay. Thank you. So, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Dave Wolfram. So motion is carried. So as soon as we can humanly possible get this funding in place, yeah. we'll get and this we'll rope. contract and it's still work. Thank you so much. It's a part of our funding that we could start. As long as we have the funding for us, we can yeah. work through the scope, discuss it with Allie and Annalise, so pull together everything, mm -hmm. get the scope settled. And then um, depending on what the price is, it depends on right. you know how we move forward. Right. But yeah, we could. We could we'll get that, that started. When she gets that so I'll I get think it's going to be great. Be I, it's a really, really. Based I, on my phone calls this afternoon, I think that we really have a help, need help. Yeah. Well, thank you and, guys. Yeah, thank you so thank so much. for your help. And Thanks the you. problem is, it's just going to get worse as we start walking down again. I yeah. think we're all sensing that in our own sort of like hearts that we need to do what we can to care for our people. Yep. And we're, we're, we're taking steps, so we really appreciate you guys listening to us and taking steps. Well, thank you for doing the work. I, I just want to know I really appreciate it because poor Casey is really overworked already. And <laughs> we're just trying to keep our heads above the water here with all the things that are happening. Yeah, well, we're here. Whatever we can do to keep continuing, and I'm sure you'll still hear from us asking, yep. you know, how we can <laughs> How it's help. going, yeah. Good. Yeah, but it really makes a difference, so thank you. And thank you. Yeah, and good you. luck thank out you. there. Thank you very much. <laughs> bye bye. Thank you. All right.
Okay, uh, Stockman reports and announcements. I just wanted to hit on a couple things for, uh, for Sue. The uh, Frontier Youth Field Hockey Team tryouts are, are, are going to happen um, August 23rd and 24th for grades four through six. And this is uh, the Union 38 students from Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley um, at not between 9 and 11 a.m. at the Frontier Field Hockey Field um, near the baseball field behind the school. The cost is $100 payable um, after team selection. Uh, players must bring their own equipment, water bottle, and hand sanitizer. Rental equipment is available by contacting the recreation department. So um, the, the team has been great. They've had a, uh, some really good success over the last few years, so please um, get involved with that. And the second one is uh, soccer for 2021. Uh, registration is Saturday, August 28th from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. and Wednesday, September 1st from 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, at the tent next to the town hall over by the senior center there, um, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield. Registration forms may be found online at www.deerfieldma.us. Uh, so um, please sign up for some soccer. That's it. So now. Trevor, do you want to leave those uh, notes on my desk and I can put it on Facebook? Oh, yes, please. Thank you. I'll, I'll drop Thanks. those off to you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Carolyn? Um, no, I don't have any Board of Selectmen ones. Board of Health? Yes, I have Board of Health ones. The first one is a happy one. It is? Um, yes, August 25th um, at 6 o'clock is a stamp presentation by the postmaster, uh, oh, yes. Robin Dursgro. Great. He's going to do the stamp dedication, the thank you dedication to Treehouse for volunteering their um, location. And then also thank the EDS volunteers. Um, so Jen, I, I will um, need you to send an email to our EDS group and all our volunteers. So I'll go over it with you um, sure. so that people can be present here yeah. to get the presentation. Do you know what time that is? Six o'clock. Six o'clock on, yep. on, on the 25th, you said? Yes, the okay. 25th. So we're gonna do that before the meeting or? Just at the very beginning. Okay. Um, it will take like five minutes. At five o'clock or six o'clock? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. We just need yep. to add it to the add agenda. agenda. First item. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Um, we just need to make sure, uh, since Kim is leaving, gonna, she had uh, been the one that committed to come, so yeah. we just need to make sure it's, it's Damien or Dean, one yeah. of the others. Yeah. Um, so then... The other good news is we've had no West Nile disease. We're into August. This is wonderful. We've had loads and loads of mosquitoes, but thankfully Kevin, and thank you, Kevin, um, Scarborough, are, he's been running around um, lava siding crazily um, because the water has just been <laughs> tremendous in the month of July. But normally our disease load for the last 12 years, um, last year was the first year we had no mosquito disease load and it usually shows up on July 4th week. And we made it through last year. And even though we had a terrible month of July with water and we're, we're doing it. We're no getting, no disease. There's a ton of mosquitoes out there. Yeah, just but not carrying a disease. There's no right. disease load as far as we know. So I'm, I'm, we're trapping them. We're catching a lot of them. But they also are a lot of nuisance mosquitoes. So um, the, Kevin has been lava siding where we had hot spot and it's really yeah. working. So Good. thank you to the highway department. Yeah. Um, the downside is that just since last week, 83% of, of the caseloads in Massachusetts for COVID is now the new variant Delta. And that's yeah. up from 52% so in one week. So it's Balloon. really, yeah. it's just ballooning. Um, the difference between the alpha variant that was circulating in the be beginning of last year and yeah, um, and then also um, this Delta is that the disease load in a vaccinated person is almost the same. The, you know, the virus load in your upper respiratory system is almost the same in a vaccinated person as a unvaccinated person. The vaccines are working. So if you're even thinking about getting it, please go get it because it makes such a difference 
the people that are hospitalized and the people that are dying are the unvaccinated. Yep. The problem is we as vaccinated people can pass it on to unvaccinated kids. Our kids are not eligible yet for the vaccine and it's very, very scary. As soon as, it's, as the vaccine is approved, probably sometime this fall, late fall, we will hold the clinics and we will make sure our kids are vaccinated. We have a very successful rate at, you know, Frontier. We had over almost 300 kids, um, you know, under 16 come through, the 16 to 12 year olds. Yeah. And um, I know quite a few kids um, have gone through the summer that have turned 12, they're getting it. So I think our vaccination rate among our kids is pretty good, but until the kids are eligible under 12, they're at risk. Yes. Yeah. So please, please, please be very careful. Five times more contagious. It is at least 50% transmission rate more. Mm -hmm. It's like chicken pox or measles. It's, right. You just have to walk through it. So it's very critical to be in airy places where the aerosols do not build up. Mm -hmm. So if you're thinking about going to a restaurant, try to eat outside. If you're, if you're around people that you're not sure of, if they, you know, maybe or maybe not vaccinated, make sure you're socially distanced and be outside as much as possible. It's the same precautions that we had before. It's just the variant is much more um, transmissible and it can be passed by the vaccinated. Mm -hmm. And the vaccinated are protected. We will probably have a booster for older people that might not have as robust immune system or that have comorbidities that their immune system is not as robust and as high. But right now, the data is showing that the vaccines are working and people are protected. So do everything you can to get encourage people to be vaccinated and just be careful. Yep, sure. Trevor? Okay. Um, I mean, other than, I don't know if you remember the last time we met, we had our second meeting for the sewer uh, project down in um, down at the plant. So everything's going really well there. They've got the um, forms done up for the the grit chamber, the headworks walls are you know foundation slabs going in. Um, they're really rocking and rolling. It's it's great to just see all that work down there, and um, everybody seems to be on target. All the um, you know requests for information, getting on top of everything, the pay. Uh, Pay requests are going through, and USDA is approving, and we're all, you know, we're rocking and rolling. It's going, it's going very well. Um, the DA project as well is, I think, done, um, pretty close to done. So, you know, they were very fast on that. They, they changed those pipes quick and lined them. Um, so I think DA will be very happy that that'll be done before the kids yeah. come back. So everything, everything on the sewer front seems to be going, going very well. You know what? I forgot and, one thing. Uh -huh. um, September 30th is the senior flu clinic, potentially, and then October 3rd, which is just Sunday, will be our general flu clinic. Okay. Um, the reason why I say it's there, we don't have a definitive date for sure, that's when we're going to set it up and that's when we're going to plan it, but we don't have the vaccine yet. Right. We don't know uh, if because of the vaccine um, production lines are being impacted at all by the, you know, producing the cool. COVID vaccine. So we're anticipating the usual delivery. So uh, uh, September 30th for seniors, flu clinic, and then October 3rd. They'll both be drive-throughs and we'll probably do it at the highway garage yeah. just so we don't have to worry about well. weather. That works really well. Yeah. 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 Um, I'd like to um, compliment Kevin uh, working with CNA Construction, uh, they did a lot of work up on the north end of town, up by Richardson's. Uh, they opened up that drainage area uh, between 5 and 10 and Mill Village. Uh, so uh, they did a fantastic job of getting that all opened up, back down to the original uh, bed of, of the stream. And you know, no, it appears now. as though the drainage will be a lot better in that area. Hopefully, we won't get that flooding like we've seen recently. They restored the riverbed, and yeah. they're um, laying out the soil on site, 
and they will seed it with a conservation mix so that um, there'll be the start of a farmland reclamation project going mm -hmm. forward. Yep. Um, Land Trust is the owner of the property and they're thrilled to death. It's been great. Yeah, I, I toured it. It's wonderful. Uh, up at the river this weekend, and, and the water was just dipping right out. I mean, it was just flowing like it should. I mean, it was just, I've never well, seen a stream going like that. There's a lot of weeds. Yeah, there's a lot the in there. Right. It's been held up for so yeah. long that it's yeah. really good to get it moving yeah. and stop the, you know, know, all that flooding on 5 and 10. So it's great. So, you know, there's a, a lot of work going on on our culverts and things in town trying to mitigate a lot of problems that we do have here. Uh, and he did that work through his emergency order. That's yeah. right. Yeah, that you know, we did declare a state of emergency because basically it was closed down five and ten and causing flooding to households and things. So um, that well, gave us the opportunity to have failures and you know, um, conservation commission come in, take a look at it, inspect it, and determine that we were within our limits to do what we did yeah. to restore it to the what it should should have been. Well, it's definitely a public safety issue. Yeah. I mean, there was car accidents yeah. up there. You know, they had one car flip over. Yeah. Yeah. So, granted, he was he alleged to be doing excessive on. speed um, when he was Doesn't passing matter. somebody, but um, it was awful. So. Right. I just refer to it. Some days it's just very difficult to correct stupid. <laughs> yeah, you but, don't go fast through a pond. No. So, okay. Um, let's see. Next thing on the agenda will be sewer commissioners uh, for the abatement for Frontier Regional. Oh, where am I? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we were going to special town meeting. But, um, do I have a different agenda? What? Yep, this is the. Oh, yeah, special the town meeting. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, all right. So we announced I didn't read it all. Oh, that's okay. I just read the select board yep. for the health. <laughs> yep. Um, so do we want to, do you want to? I can give an outline. Just a quick. Just a quick outline. So we have scheduled a special town meeting. We have several articles we need to uh, present to the governing body. Um, we scheduled it for October 4th. And I actually asked, normally we don't do this for a special, but I asked the school if they would allow us to utilize the auditorium space at the very least um, so that we could have plenty of space for folks, and I've gotten confirmation from various town officials that they can um, attend as well as council. So I'm about, to, I waited until tonight so the board could officially announce it. Mm -hmm. I'm about to send the email out to everybody just reminding them the folks that have articles we knew about are, will become involved. But this is a fairly quick development, so the planning board has some work to do. We have some corrections we have to do to a couple of numbering issues we found from the annual town meeting, and we have a couple of other things that had been sitting on the back burner. So you will get a draft, um, not necessarily a warrant, but the list of articles I think we should expect to see, um, because we'll have to have that published by the third week of September. Okay. So, when will we close the warrant? You'll want to close the warrant probably, well, let me talk to Barbara, but I think it would be before we ask for a final. So I would like to, and I said this, I sent an email to poor Annalise. <laughs> I sent an email. She's on vacation. She's still getting email. Um, I sent her an email and, and let her know that the process that planning board would have to go through, we have to have that information by the 15th. So we can come up, we can develop the warrant, have the placeholders for the articles, and you know, close the warrant once that language is finalized with them, and then have the board sign it. But okay. I also mentioned to them that I would like any development of articles, as soon as they have what they expect to be final language, that should go to town council, right. because we have a tight turnaround on this, yeah. and we know that we have several things to deal with. So I would just like the board to be cognizant of that as we move forward, because we've got some financial items we, have, we may have to deal with, the work that we did yeah. around the, the culvert and the, and the right. emergency order. There's no guarantee that we will have FEMA money for that to the town. That may be an expense that we have to fund right. in some manner. Okay. We, we do have some money um, left over from 
which I had gotten before, almost sixty thousand dollars is in the account. Oh, cool. I'll talk to Brenda tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> it's in the. Uh, she knows Anatomy. which one is. She knows which account it is. Yeah. So we're actually going over special funds tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. It has to be related to the Mill Village area. Right. Which, which this is. Which is so yeah. it's fine. Yeah, this is directly related um, to that. Is, when you talk to um, Frontier, can you just verify that we potentially might want to be outside as well? I, I said something to Oh, okay. That. I, it just, you know, everything is evolving. So it is. And how so bad I've, is I've mentioned that to Jennifer, and I'll, I'll reiterate that when I send out the email. But yeah, I had mentioned that to them. I, we I think we should pivot. plan the auditorium, but in case... Mm -hmm. In case we can't, we need to yeah. be able, and that's something that Carolyn had brought up before when we started talking about it, was doing it in a time frame where the weather's still nice enough mm -hmm. and we can get the light. I was just worried it was going to get too dark, right. too, it will. you know, yeah. so I, that's why I've been so, like, pushing for this October 4th day meeting. Okay, sorry. Yep. Yep. That's okay. No, I, I just had to... Traumatized figure out last how, year. It, how it could work. Mm -hmm. It's just a tight time frame, and planning board and I know. you guys as the select board will have to. I know we have to move some things along. We can do that. Um. Okay. Thank you, Casey, for working on this. Yeah. I know I've been bugging you about it, but I I just was really worried in case we had to go outside. No, we just had to settle whether everybody could go because the key yeah. participants needed to be able to be there, like Dan and Lisa and you guys and me, and whether yeah. we have a space. So thanks to Scott and Bill and Darius for being so helpful. Okay. And we uh, we have a school reopening strategy meeting on the 18th, six o'clock. That's Board of Health and of uh, Four Towns School Committee of and five. five yeah, committees. five school committees. This will, be Zoom. this will be a Zoom meeting because yeah, uh, there's too many people to be maintained in here. Right. And um, we'll um, be discussing how what safety measures we yep. um, will be thinking about implementing for school opening. Yep. It will be the latest information. DPH call is usually on Tuesday. Right. Um, and, you know, I'll get them the latest information. Right. Sounds good. Have they Should published we... their new data? On the website, because I went looking oh, for it, but I didn't well, have we get the new data every Tuesday okay. from when I when I'm on that call every week. They they canceled the Friday calls back three or four months ago, but I think they're going to start up the Friday calls again because the, so many cases are jumping up. And then we had the sports uh, separate call for sports, and um, that ended when school ended and. So I, I haven't um, seen that to be starting up. So I'll work with Carl for the information for next week mm -hmm. so that um, we'll have some information on that. But I, in my mind, it hasn't really changed the, yeah. from what I, my information that I got all last year was that the, the biggest exposure was carpooling to games and in locker rooms. So yeah. if you keep the kids outside and try to make them have minimal use of the locker rooms and in, encourage people not to carpool. I know that sounds awful. We should be all carpooling, but you know, if you, it's it was, you know, letting your guard down mm -hmm. in outside your pods, and that's how they traced all the, you know, the outbreaks and. And the buses are required masks anyway. Right. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. So. And just make so. I mean, parents did want to drive their kids because they didn't want to take the buses, which I totally understand. But, you know, I know I, I'll be driving one of my grandkids around because you don't want to carpool. So, right. you know, and so Victoria's going to have to drive somebody, you know, CC, and I'll drive Madeline. And there's just much, nothing you can do. We just have to do everything again, and it's very stressful. I certainly recognize it for people. We'll try to be as accommodating as possible, but... Um, try to have guidelines like we did before to keep the kids safe and yeah. the schools open. We right. did. We were extremely successful. We were one of the most successful school districts in the yeah. in the state. And I have had multiple um, com uh, compliments on how we were so on top of tracing, contact yeah. tracing. Meg Birch and the school nurses were wonderful, yeah. and um, I think it really made a difference. We were very aggressive about 
contact tracing. So we're going to continue that. They're going to continue pool testing. I'm sure we'll recommend that. And yep. um, so, I mean, I, I really think it makes a huge difference. Sure does. People work as a team. Yep. I, I Darius was fantastic to work with. Yeah. Do we want to talk about the possible format for public comment during that meeting next week? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that I had been thinking about was there's a lot of people. You've got a lot of committees with many members, and you have members of the public that I already know are interested because we've had contact mm -hmm. who are interested in speaking. So I think we need to be mindful of how we move that along. And although I haven't, Darius is going to hit me when he sees <laughs> I haven't had a chance to talk to Darius. Um, I was told that the school committee they have a certain process that they use to move things along in terms mm -hmm. of um, comment. Yeah, so, I think a list and a, a three-minute yeah, three speech. Or yeah. Three minutes to speak. But this is Just actually a Board of Health right. meeting. It is, but right. maybe we and adopt that. it would be that. similar to what you would do with a yeah. hearing. But it was kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. With the number of emails and comments that we've already received, to make just to get, get through the meeting, I think we're going to have to so it's a some format that, you know, whether people contact and we establish a list beforehand and put a time limit on each individual, whether it be two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, whatever, and then that way we can get through all those comments that people are have. Because a lot of people have a lot of differing opinions on this. So. Right. And, and so one thing that we've experienced in the past with time limitations is not always, people are very passionate about what they want to say, mm -hmm. and we get that. Yeah. We, we w well, you're talking about their children. Well, that's it. And and they have, I mean, even some of the kids may have things to say. So I think we just need to be very mindful of how we keep track of things so that we know who wants to speak. And so I'm going to talk to Jennifer about it tomorrow and reach okay. out to Darius and see if he and Donna have any suggestions. <laughs> Maybe Brian, Veronique, or Jeff have suggestions, my colleagues in yep. the, the other three towns. So. You know, it, it, if we can gather some suggestions to sort of create create a way for everybody to, to feel heard, heard yeah. and, and so that we can just try not to have a 10-hour meeting, that would be good, too. Yeah. Casey, yeah. are, are, are we, are, are we monitoring ahead. it? Yes. It's yeah. our meeting we're hosting. Okay. So it's probably Casey and Jennifer are going to say anything. We're going to watch people. Jennifer, it's our Board of Health meeting. We're going to vote okay. what to do at the Deerfield Elementary and Frontier. Okay. Okay. Anything else I missed, Jeff? Nope. I should read to the end of the sentence, I guess, huh? Okay. So, um, Sewell Commissioner's the uh, Frontier Regional School District abatement. I'm, I'm, I'm a little confused about this abatement. Oh, yeah. It, it, yeah, it's completely confused. So what I have found, I've been looking at this for a week and a half or more. Okay. Um, I believe when the water department read the meter at Frontier, there was an error somehow because the number that they have down as the number being read in May, it still hasn't reached that number. So. There, there was, that's why it looked like a hundred, uh, a million four hundred thousand gallons of water. Right. Um, there wasn't that amount because they haven't even gotten to that number yet. So what I did figure out based on that is that they have used, um, they used like a hundred and one hundred ninety-one thousand gallons, and eighty-five thousand gallons were. Uh, on the fields because most of the year, most of those months, they don't use irrigation, but in the beginning, the tail end in the beginning, they do. So it's about 110,900 gallons that were used between November and um, and hey, April. So the actual bill is $251. No, ignore that figure. That was, that was if we were using um, uh, the water department's figure. So I, I did calculations today, but I haven't been able to give it onto that piece of paper. That was from our last meeting, the, the okay. one that you're looking at. Oh, okay. So, um, uh, I, be I believe their bill to be uh, 1,600, 
sixty-seven dollars and twenty-nine cents. But this I, is actually I a water to, district bill, not a sewer bill. Yeah, and oh, I want to okay. and I want to talk with um, with Sarah. I talked to her a bit today, but I I couldn't I couldn't spend as, as much time as I wanted to here today getting this done. So I just what I would like to do is is um, uh, approve the abatement and have Sarah finish the calculation based on the water usage of one hundred and ten thousand nine hundred gallons. Okay, I'll make that, that motion. Because I'm just not sure if that would be. I, she adds interest charge and minimum use charge, that kind of stuff into it. I just want to have her do the calculation so it's accurate. We can sign off on it on the next meeting if we want to. So. You could add that to your motion as a friendly amendment to sign it once it's completed. Yeah, there we go. We'll sign it once it's completed. Yeah, uh, let's do that. That way we won't hold it up anymore. Great. That's the motion to approve 110,900 gallons. Yes. Abatement of that amount. Th that's the usage that they use. And we'll sign it when when it's done right. calculating. Yep. Okay. Dave, Dave for the discussion. Peter, shut it all. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Right, Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Neff. Aye. Dave Wolfram. All right. Thank you for um, pursuing that, Trevor. Uh, no, we'll, I, we'll figure it out and try to get it figured out for next time. I, they're going to change the meter. I don't think they have to, but I think they are going to change the meter anyway. So I just want to make sure that I, I wish they would change it after like November so that we could get a solid reading from, you know, before they go and change it again. But I don't know. I'll talk to the water department. I met with them yesterday and I got to go back. Okay. May I make a comment? Sure. Can we make a vote to use your stamp? Yes. Make a motion to use the stamps. I'll second that. Any Thank further you. discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn. No. Aye, Dave Wolfram. The stamp Sabbath. <laughs> Gotta lighten it up somehow. <laughs> okay. Uh, Franklin Regional Transport Authority. Do we have the board appointee? Do David, may I? comment on it? I, sure. have, I have notes. <laughs> you have notes. So generally Bob Decker is the designee and he's provided um, very good service to the town, communicates with the staff and if we need to bring something to you guys he certainly makes it, gives us the brief so if there's something we need to talk about he does that. But there's also an appointee for a member of the select board so I wanted to know if you wanted, they sent us a letter, mm -hmm. I wanted to know if you wanted to participate or continue to have Bob Decker uh, represent the town as the designee. There's two different appointments there. So, so Bob would continue or as the designee. He's already appointed as the designee. And he really fulfills a role, mm -hmm. um, often in a manner that the Hill Towns will appoint a town administrator to be on the COG because he brings mm -hmm. all the information we need back. So it's just a question of whether you all want so to. So if we appoint another person, um, do we get two votes, or does Bob just get one vote? Yeah, he gets one vote. Oh, okay. And it's no, I'm fine with that then. It doesn't. We our ride activity isn't as high as some other towns. Right. So, but he's very dedicated about going to the meetings, especially if there's something he needs me to know about. Yeah. I know. So, no, I, I, I appreciate a member of the select board to participate. Oh, 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 oh. Other than that. Other um, than Bob. So they, we could join as well, along with Bob. You could, but I think there's only one vote, just like you right. and I going to right. a exactly. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, they sent us the email, and I hadn't thought about it for a while, um, but I wanted to know if you were interested. And I know Bob has been working. We've been having an issue with transportation yeah. and with the senior center, and because Sandro uses TVTA, TVTA and uh, communicate, and it's such a hassle. Bob's been working I on I know. That. We've been trying to find some way to get those two And so that's actually the two work. organizations themselves. Right. The FRTA can provide certain things and PBTA can provide certain things. Yeah. And actually, Bob was the one that explained it to me. Yeah. Um, so in a pretty in-depth. So 
you know, he is on top of that because he yeah. knows that it, it affects both sides of the river, so to it speak. It does. And I don't like to make that really distinction, tough. but it functionally, no, it that's the issue. That's the issue. And so, so I think Bob is a good rep, but I wanted you to at least discuss whether you wanted to. No, no Bob can keep I going. That's Bob great. For, okay. For rep, and for sure. We just pass it on to Bob that we really would like to have him keep working on the senior issue. Okay. Because that just needs to be resolved. Yes. Sometimes. Okay. And we should go to we should go to um, Joe and Natalie if Bob can't get it sorted out. That's what we soon. had. Yeah. That the question that we had last year, there was a question that came up that Bob was really helpful with and, and helped connect some of the dots over there. Um, and at the time, we didn't. Ha I didn't have a really good answer because there were some questions about the connection between PBTA and FRTA. So it is worth a question to maybe have him talk to Natalie. Just because he has more familiarity with how mm -hmm. FRTA runs, mm -hmm. so maybe I can. Jennifer can put a bug in his ear. Tag your it. <laughs> okay. Thank, thank you. you. So we don't need to vote on that because it's Bob's already a point yet, right? So. Yeah. Okay. Next on uh, Mass Senior Games, John. Hello. Join, Welcome. Yes, come on up to the table. To the table. To the mic. Yes, step on up. I can't hear you in the back. Yeah. You introduce yourself for the people at home. <clears throat> My TV? Yeah. Oh, wow, great. <laughs> yeah, they can even see you now. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about your... Um... Okay, so uh, uh, I'd like to put on a road race on Veterans Day, November 11th. Um, it's for the Massachusetts Senior Games. I don't know if you're familiar with that organization, but it's basically sort of analogous to the to the Olympics for athletes 50 plus years old. Um, and they have qualifying events for um, this, this, uh, this ro road race would be a qualifying event to, um, to go to the nationals, which are in Florida in May of 2022. Okay. So, um, the real request, I guess, is Park Street would be closed from about 8 a.m. to noon. Um, the road would be closed? From yeah, that's the request, yes. Um, I put a, I put a um, request for facilities use in Frontier Regional yesterday. So um, parking would be down there and um, race registration and pick, packet pickup, VIB, VIB number pickup. And then people could walk from there to the start, which would be in the center of town. So what, what would the route be? It would be? Um, up North Main, right on Hillside, over Hillside to River Road, down to bridge. 160, yeah, to the bridge, right right at the bridge, 116, um, and then Sugarloaf Sugar Street back. To the center of town. Oh, and once you come, actually, to, to get to 6.2 miles, you also have to add in Crestview. So okay. down Crestview, loop Crestview, back out of Crestview, and then back to the center of town. And and uh, and it would run, and so that that would be the 10k. That would be the 10k. The 5k is, is shorter. The 5k is 1.55 miles from the center of town, yeah. up hillside, turn around and come back. Okay. And then so that uh, and so we would be closing that road during that time of the race and well, have to kind of figure just, out. Just Park Street. The rest of the roads would be open. Okay. Yeah. So, and we just check with John and see what, what's needed in coverage and all that. But. John Reno's going to work with John. They already know about it. Oh, okay, great. I reached out. Perfect. So what we need well, to excited. do is if you, you know, if you approve it, I just need to know so I can let John and Zach and Kevin know and coordinate. John will coordinate with them and with the school. Mm -hmm. So I, I would make the motion to support this um, with the um, just the uh, condition yeah. that just the condition that um, John Pachorek, um right coordinated. Yeah, that, that was actually for, sure. yeah. for safety issues. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Okay. Um, this is similar to the veterans run you used to have or something. It's the same course as the VFW race. We, okay. did, we did that in 2012, 13, and 14. It's okay. the same course. It was. Um, Identical, both the 5K and 10K are identical. Right. Okay. Good. That's great. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Uh, I, Carolyn Neff. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfman. I feel like I jumped. Okay. Hey, John. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Good luck.
Thank you, John. Thank you. John. Thank you. I think that's pretty nice. Thank you. That's great. Next thing on the agenda is a one day liquor license for at Woman Hill, Belly of the Beast. Um, I'm, I'm okay with that um, as long as we get a uh, vehicular license. Fancy, you should say that. We have, I have a list of what we have. Okay. We have their insurance certificate, the workers' compensation affirmation, um, copies of the Northampton permits, which include a vehicular's license. Oh, they do? Okay. And um, basically, my recommendation is to approve the permit. And we will provide that permit once she comes in and Provide payment. Pays, yeah. pays for it. I, I did. a couple of other things. I, what? Oh, I did. you came in to pay? I did, yeah. I oh. brought, brought in checks to uh, Patricia on, um, I'm sorry, on Tuesday morning. I, I oh, great. did cool. checks. Great, thank oh, okay. you. Okay, then I make a motion that we approve this. And yeah, I I'll think it's that right there. You look right next to you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So they will sign it. Oh, they God, will I have a purple. One seconded. Okay, any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. You know what, can I borrow your pen? I um, have purple. Oh, I just, I don't just want to, it's purple. I just want to say thank you all purple. very much. And also, I, I just really commend all the good work that's being happening tonight. Um, I've been listening thank in. You. Yeah really think that you guys are doing a tremendous job. So thank you all from, from the Northampton thank community. So okay, be well, good night. Thank you very much, good night. She makes really good tips, just in yep. case anybody wants to know. Yeah, yeah no, I know. <laughs> okay. Um, so the zoning is just, I haven't had a chance to really um, look over the tourism um, overlay, but I'm I'm thinking that we would want to um, include Yankee Candle, wouldn't we? Well, so I think what could happen, and I talked to Lisa about this briefly. Um, what she'd like is comments. Okay. So that we can expedite this because it is a tight time frame to town meeting. Um, how about if we um, read this really well and then um, send, submit any comments to you? Perfect. Can you do it by Friday? Yeah. Well, no, that's <laughs> no. what I'm thinking. Or, or, or earlier? <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Well, the reason why I'm thinking yes because then we can put it on the agenda for next week. It's already on, I'm on the agenda. Day. When? When are you on vacation? Tomorrow. As soon as this meeting's oh. over. Oh, geez, Trevor, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. Um, I it's okay you to sleep, though. Just, you read this before oh, you yeah, go to right. bed, and it'll go to sleep. Oh, I'll just, I'll, when you read these I'll make zoning the things. Comments, I'll touch, I'll okay, touch so if you send them to me individually, I will send them to Lisa, because we do need to turn it around. And I think that comment in, in and of itself is right. the actual overlay area. Yep. Maybe that's a concern. I'm, I'm fine with municipal access. I, I did review that. Yeah, yeah. let me see. Yeah. I'm, I'm fine with that one, but I just wanted to review yeah, the why don't you look at it. Delay. Shoot me your comments, and we will get them to Lisa as quickly as we can. Okay. So, just an update on municipal facilities. This is a little bit different language. Um, the key thing here is the planning board has to report a favorable recommendation to town meeting, and so. Based on the conversation in June, I think it's important for us to demonstrate what the effect is mm -hmm. because there's several projects out there. John Pachurek um, was at one of the meetings we talked about sort of this in, in a tangential way. He explained some of the access that would, could be we could struggle with around Braver, utilizing those lots for yeah. whatever we do, whether it's recreation fields or senior housing or whatever it is. If we utilize that, we need access. And so, you know, it, it's actually favorable in, in part of this conversation. It's favorable to a homeowner if they sell a portion of the property and we could utilize, you know, a certain amount of it but not disturb the house, for instance, and be able to obtain access from North Main Street because Braeburn itself is very small and doesn't have that kind of access. So developing 
example. the identification, the examples of, of where this could be very helpful would be is something. Well, the Leary lot. Your example is the Leary lot. The Leary, Leary lot, and when those two, when that building got sold, the both lots got joined together, and what's left for access? 50 feet. 50 feet. To get a road and in there. That's the, the area where we put around. Through. And that's where we had always intended to trade a little bit yes. twice Flip it and through, so that we can have one way through. Safety all the way through there. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So Tara's going to get me some information. But that, that's a perfect example because if we, well, Carolyn, I remember this because this was the first climate resiliency event I went to last February, was that lot was a huge discussion because of the connection to the Leary lot. Yeah. So if we could utilize that as an economic development site. This was our, you know, uh, this was for our uh, sink in our opera funding there mm -hmm. and get the difference between um, what it takes to do the, the parking lot traditionally and get some MVP money to um, make it green and um, add some greenery to connect uh, with uh, Berkshire Brew. I mean, this is what we want to do. The company would be very interested in how we did that. If it's an economic development spot that brings people to the hardware store, right. they're going to be interested in seeing how that develops as well. So these are the well, it's the whole downtown really show to people. Well, it's a whole downtown activity. Yeah. I keep looking at Jeff. Poor Jeff. <laughs> well, it's <laughs> for the whole. Ask it's the now. whole. It's for the whole downtown. It is, and so. That's, that's the key piece. And it connects it in with complete movement. streets. It, it, it connects into the commons. It connects into all the sociability, walkability, all the stuff that we've been talking about for years. And you, you all have started to make progress on that. And so I think, you know, part of, part of helping town meeting understand what the purpose is is giving them something to look at. Yeah. You know, how does this benefit you? And that's what you just said, Carolyn. So we need to have that in a brief so that people can read it. Yep. Um, I think that would be important. And, and I think... You did a job think, explaining it. Yeah. So people have a, can, can wrap their heads around how this can benefit in the future. Yep. But that's demonstrated directly by what we have for property and, and the sort of interest we have in making changes. Okay. Yeah. Well, now, would this still be subject to site plan review? Yeah. No. Yeah, that's what I thought. You don't. It doesn't. And that's, that's the. That's I think that's the part that was missed at the town meeting. People yes. didn't understand that. Yeah. Yes. This would still be. And they thought. Like and they everybody. thought it was going to be like everybody in his brother's backyard, and it's not. No. For specific, it's specific, specific properties that we own right now. Yeah. Or have we problem. own in the future, for you know whether it's it's for whatever purpose that meets the needs of the town. Yeah. But is mindful of the the neighborhoods and the effects that these things can have. So, plus you also have to, you know, Jeff's, you know, participation here tonight, I'm going to point to him and say, you know, Jeff fulfills a dual role in terms of his service to the town. He's on the finance committee. He's been on the capital committee in the past. And that's also a function of any approval, is to go through the financial evaluation process. It's not just the select board. It's the planning board and the capital improvement planning committee and the finance committee. And if there's a building involved, maybe the building advisory committee would be involved. But there's a lot of groups that, that come into play here. And so that's part of the conversation, yep. at least observational. And like I said, with tur tourism overlay, if you can get me comments, I will get them to Lisa as soon as I can. Okay. I have a question. Yeah. How does the and this is sort of opening a bag of worms, but how does the board feel about considering um, a change to the bylaws that would indicate we would do zoning bylaw changes at like at a fall special town meeting? Oh, you mean do? Instead of doing them in the annual, because the annual is really uh, uh, geared to be the financial Discussion. I think the the thing is you don't uh, most most zoning is done in cycles. Yeah. So I think after this, I mean Anna Lee can correct me. Uh, oh, I guess she's not on. But enjoying a vacation. Yeah. <laughs> but um, 
you know, you go in cycles, and so I wouldn't anticipate. The, the reason you don't want to do special town meetings too often is because, you, you know, the turnout is not necessarily that good in special town meetings. You know? I understand that. And generally for zoning, you want as many people as you can. Yeah. Um, but I thought I'd throw the question out there. Because yeah. Somebody well, asked I, me. I see the point because it's it just zoning is a gra so it is much time out yeah. of the meeting when the meeting is yeah. really a lot to do with finance. So the, critic the critical piece of annual time but meeting I, is setting the budget. I know, but I, I, I almost feel like you know, once you get through this, it's probably not going to be too much again for a while. And well, council we can identify some changes we need to make just to because, really? well, well, then we then we things don't point to the right places in the bylaw. But then you know, something like that can be cleaned up at a special. I don't think anyone's going to have a problem with that. I, I, if I, you know, we, we could try working with the planning board so they try to mostly do stuff. Try to look well. at it, you know, because oh, let's face it. Uh, Quorum requirement for annual is one. <laughs> Quorum well, requirement for special is 35. Right. So, you know. It's just that a lot of times in the past we haven't had very good turnout. I know. And then people yeah. complain that we're not being transparent, you know, by doing so much, you know. I mean, when we put off the capital in the past because mm -hmm. we didn't have information, we did it in the fall, then people can us of trying to run it through and I, you that, know that's so actually a, a reason to think about identifying a specific special town meeting it doesn't have to be a date per se but that you're going to have one and you could say we'll do zoning at that or some you know, there might be I language know. but that was I, the reason I asked because yeah. I know there are times where you have I, to I just have things. over the years I've been so criticized for trying to do stuff at the fall town meetings beyond the mm -hmm. minimal but well that's why I asked I, what everybody's I think, but you are correct. It's really hard to have, you know, special town meeting. I mean, to have zoning at an annual town meeting when. And I, it's not that I don't want, you know, folks to participate. It's just it makes the annual the town meeting. The criticality of of the financial sort of people don't always see that there's a critical piece for annual, which is the budget. I know. Um, and in the last couple of years. There's been such a difference in how we did annual town meeting, um, and yet the turnout's been amazing. I mean, people people really show up. The and trend make the trend is to have more fall. You know, to have we used to never have specifically have special town meetings in the right. fall, but now it's almost a, a given because the, you know the budgets are so late and so convoluted, and we don't have the information really. To budget like we used to, so um, you know maybe the, that criticism before of not doing so much at town meeting in the fall is is falling by the wayside just because everybody and his brothers doing fall town meetings. It's and almost normal. Them. Yeah, you know, it's just normal. Them. Yeah. Okay. I so, just wondered how you felt about it. I just was just a little sensitive based oh, on past know. criticism. I remember hearing that too. Yeah, based on past criticism, but. Bob here about the building commissioner? I don't see Bob. Okay. No, no. Bob, that's, the, uh, uh, oh, do you? Yeah, but you have oh, okay. you, you have to you have on that. So, I um, a quick question. Oh. As far as uh, the special town meeting, do you know what zoning bylaws are coming forward to that special town meeting? The are tourist the overlay, the tourist overlay, and the municipal access. I can give you a list. Okay. You, can, you can give you a list. So the solar, so can you move solar. over to the microphone? <laughs> thank you. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I'm you. Uh, thank yeah, you. No, I was just trying to. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, Jeff Upton, resident of South Deerfield here. I was just wondering, as far as special town meeting, if you knew what was coming forward with with the. Uh, Planning board, as far as zoning bylaws, is a small scale zoning We're, bylaw coming forward. I, I don't know for don't sure. They haven't structure. voted that, but we we are. I know they are working on it. Right. I don't know if we'll be ready, but we are anticipating being ready for the tourist overlay district and the municipal access. All right. Amendment. The other one is I was wondering about the accessory. Uh, no, apartments. that's not ready yet. That's not ready. No. So those two items. You, you, I had, 
criticized that one, and I right want I, to work on it, and we haven't done any work on it. Okay, yes. Well, I've been trying to follow that to make sure that I didn't miss any meetings because obviously, as I have expressed before, that I do have some concerns about that. Yeah. No, the planning board was very good. They listened to the yeah. and pulled it and said that they would work on right. it in the future. Okay, I was just curious. And this has nothing to do with the planning board, please. All individual members of the planning board, don't get upset. It was, nope. It's more, it's just about the bylaws, that's all. Bylaws yeah. itself. Right, bylaws, that's all. Yeah, no, the, um, we ha I haven't actually heard anything about the assessed area apartment. I'm anticipating that they probably work on it over the winter. Okay. Um, I, I mean, I, I talked to Anna Lee I'm once in a while. Sure they so. have a meeting, I think it's the 23rd of August here. Yeah, that's for our right. overlay district and the municipal right. access. Okay. We're, we uh, need to get that sorted out for the park and the Leary right. lot. Yeah, which is understandable. And very quickly, with the overlay, does that involve the Cumbie store? as it is now? I don't think so. No update on that? Um, I know they're in the process of cleaning that up. Right. Yeah. Oh, no, oh that. no, that's not downtown at all. No. Right, okay. Because there's not a... Just want to make sure. Yeah, yeah it's a corner lot. So the, the big thing there would be uh, DBA approvals for setbacks and things. Right. Yeah, it's non-conforming to begin with. Okay, yeah. I that's would love to. That's the main reason they're not taking the building down. Right. Because the footprint, you can still build, you can build where the building is as a footprint, or you can reuse the building. Right. But yeah. you're pretty much limited, right. from my understanding. I would just like to see that put on the market for a small business. I, it's I'm, front we're encouraging, Yeah, we're encouraging right. them to do. And it would, it would definitely help us as a town. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Appreciate okay. it. Thanks, Thank you. Call me. If you want to, you can send me an email and I can send you what I know I have. I, I expect now. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. So the church. Okay. So I've been working with Bob for the last couple of weeks. Okay. Thank you, um, Jeff. On that, by the way. Yeah. We um, we're going through the church because obviously winter is coming. Can't be under the tent. Um, my feelings from the seniors I've talked to, they don't really want to move anywhere. I mean, even when we were trying to move the thing 100 feet, they were upset. Never mind going into a different town. So um, I had Bob do an assessment of that building. And if we can get a temporary ramp out of the front, aluminum temporary ramp. Out of the, uh, the, the Bellagate yeah. Hall yeah. section. Yeah. yeah. And uh, make the, span the one, a uh, utility room, which is next to the bathroom, we can make that a handicap accessible bathroom. Once those two things are done, we can get an occupancy for that building. Can can we uh, modify the kitchen? Because I know we have to do a hood there or something. We, to get no, we don't out. need we don't need kitchen. Stuff. As long as we don't use the stove, if we go with microwaves, convection, uh, yep. panini, that type of thing. As long as it's not a grease, you don't need a hood. Well, what's the uh, food service Foods, using now? Food, They're not using they, that? The food comes delivered pre-prepared. And they don't heat it up there in that oven? They, they heat it up in the microwave or yeah. that, that kind of stuff. So it's, yeah, okay, great. Yeah. It's already Jen? pre-prepared. Jennifer? Yeah. Hi, I, so I talked to Bob a lot about this today. And so okay. he, he knows that if there's a 300 person occupancy, it doesn't need to be sprinklered, we'd make sure that it has smoke detectors and uh, exit signs and all that necessary uh, equipment. Uh, the stove can be rem removed or if they use just the oven and not the burner, but it's, an, it's a gas stove oh. and that's been shut off anyways. So he, right. he just wants it to be removed. Um, yep. And then he would have a designated area um, for office space as well as like the open area room. so plenty other of room whole, that other whole room with the fireplace i mean it's sealed yeah, off of that, that fireplace room. he, that he also area. was looking at i wish he was he was here tonight um he was also looking at another room to um make the accessibility uh, for a bathroom like a yeah yeah, you know, yeah. so he, yeah the utility room 
right next yeah, to so, the current bathroom. But that would give us one handicapped bathroom and three other bathrooms. I don't think there's any issue with the occupancy. Toilets, not bathrooms, you know, the occupancy being above 300 is never an no. issue. See a lot that, uh, no, I checked door. with... Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Couldn't we seal off or close off the sanctuary so, or like a, a closed door so it's not used as the, you know, people don't go in there? Hey, correct. People go in there. Has to, you know, we can still go in, but it has the floor issue, the beam issue. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so the, the square, because what we're looking at is square footage and what that triggers as far as, you okay. know, other requirements. So if you do right. seal that off for public use, but keep um, the main area to the 300 person occupancy um, for the gathering space, it would work yeah. so that it could actually, with the ramp and the bathroom, work as a really good functioning area. Okay. So, you can move all our EDS stuff into the yep. into the sanctuary. Into the and, sanctuary. You know, right. um, I'm all for that. I've had uh, Chief Pachurk pulling some of his strings already. Good. Um, and I'm contacting some local people. Uh, they don't know it yet about uh, mini splits and things like that for the instead of going with the oil. Um, but these are all things that can be done fairly quickly. Right. Uh, so there was another suggestion matter. that um, I don't know if Bob talked to you about it, Dave, about making a, an accessible entrance in the back of the church. Yeah. And, you know, instead of having people have to walk around to the front um, and putting yeah. a ramp yeah. there. So that would be something if, if we had the money to be able to do that, that would be very practical. Yeah, that, that, yeah. what we would have to do there is take out a window, yep. put yeah. in a 36 inch door right. and extend the ramp that's currently out there uh, about six feet into that area. Right. So I, I would, a, because of the COVID issue, I, I would use ARPA money for this so we can have a building that's. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I know, and Casey and I have talked about it a little bit. People are concerned that we're going to be spending money on a building that we're not eventually not going to use. But, sure. you know, quite frankly, my gut feeling is saying right now that they're never going back into that con that brick building. Depending on the report, yes. Yeah, yeah, depending on that report. But we don't we, have the report. But, but at least in the short term, we yeah. can get somewhere for them to be. Yeah, but we could be ready for better, you know, when the fall comes and it gets too cold and dark. Right. I, you know, the, the idea is to have some place for people to go. I, I don't, I mean, this whole situation with COVID is evolving. But if we have good ventilation and people socially distance and we use masks, I think you can be inside a building safely at this point. I mean, obviously the situation is changing, but if people are vaccinated and they use masks and they socially distance, I think everyone will be safe in that building because there's better circulation and better air than in the brick building. And, and not it's just, I mean, that. a part that we can't forget about um, that Casey has said before is that we will have to have um, the technology in place from the senior center over to the church so that there's computers and phones and um, that kind of that. you know technology but that yeah. one small well, we, we can blackmail Sue Antonellis to have her husband come down and do it <laughs> <laughs> so the um, oh, I said that out loud didn't I the um, <laughs> the uh, the office there has those those you know it looks like closet doors we open them up and there's desks and all that yeah. stuff in there and yeah yeah up above and there's a lot yeah, I was telling Bob that today. It's, yeah, it's a it's good great. space that that can 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 work, but I don't think I think the investment is very minimal, right. and then we have a place for seniors. I think we've got to have a place. And then that gives us some time to figure out what to do with that, that I know. building and we can close off. I don't want to be rushed into making huge decisions on some of the other stuff. With with all the other expense we have going yeah. on right now, we need yeah. to make it short I, money. To make it work. I mean, and, you know, I agree with um, that there's been lots of comments about how people feel that the town hasn't been um, passionate about the seniors. And so having something that they could go into into the winter while we figure out other, you know, other options. 
would be great. Yeah, my wife doesn't even know I volunteered her to decorate and <laughs> the place to kind of make it more homey. Yeah, yeah, that's a good opportunity. We are in trouble now. Well, yep. We better end this meeting quick. Yeah, we better end this meeting quick. <laughs> so the next item it. was um, <laughs> senior center director position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I was very pleased that um, it was updated. Yep. And, um, a little bit easier to read. Yeah. And I also was very pleased to see participates as a member of the town's management team. Yep. Um, I, I would say that's probably one of the biggest things that was an issue, and so thank you for highlighting that as a um, essential function. Yeah, go ahead. Um, we had a meeting last night on this. So. Do you want to report on it? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. So the, we had a meeting and discussed this last night, and this is compiled in the new format that we will see for the other job descriptions, and it includes the changes that they identified. And specifically, we called out coordination of the BOO meetings and their activities, specifically the group. Uh, facilitation of council on aging activities and meetings, because that's a key part of, of how the senior center functions. Collaboration with various community groups and how you collaborate within the town of Deerfield structure as an employee, to your point. Some language was, um, some language after I thought about it for a while, I just wanted to bring up, since Trevor was for the, there for the meeting, he can sort of give a flavor of, of the conversation. Um, one change that we made from the first, from the version that was initially discussed at the meeting last night to the version you're seeing is there's, in the supervision received, it says reports to as opposed to supervised by. And one thing that I would say is in terms of how that functions, Report to doesn't necessarily give the flavor of what um, a supervision, a supervisory role is in terms of the received supervision. Mm -hmm. So, but Jonathan made it very clear, and Tom agreed, and so did Trevor, that you know, managed isn't necessarily a good way to 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 describe it. So, what we did was we changed it to reports to. But part of that conversation was assigning a town administrator and the chair of the Board of Oversight to be the, the contact for that person. So I'm just wondering whether you have a, a preference on reports to versus supervised by. I know what the Board, the board of Oversight said, um, but as I mentioned to them, we have to be mindful that this is the town of Deerfield position right. and we are the hiring authority the select board is the hiring authority, but functionally the HR moves in a, in a particular path through Deerfield. Now, we've all collaborated before, and in fact, we're learning more as we go, the three of us, mm -hmm. uh, Jeff, Brian, and myself, um, specifically about programs and stuff. I haven't even had a chance to tell them about the SIG conversation. But I just wanted to draw your attention to that and to let you know that we also identified the three town administrators after the meeting. We went through the vacancy notice. And so one change that was in the job description was the education component, a minimum associate's degree with a bachelor's degree preferred. We didn't mention a discipline. So one of the comments I made was there are places in the vacancy notice that you can sort of flesh something out. And so we did add disciplinary references, elder affairs, social work, that sort of thing, as a description. Um, and so the guys and I did that. But the other thing that the BOO approved was a salary range of fifty to fifty-seven thousand dollars, so five zero to fifty-seven thousand, which is a grade four, step three to five. And pursuant to the possible changes in the class comp plan for FY twenty-three. That's a reasonable range to consider. It's assuming that we do make the step going next year of dropping the first three, you wind up at step one, and then you'd have a couple to negotiate with, um, depending on experience and that kind of thing. So we're kind of figuring where we're going to be yep. for a 40-hour work week, um, instead of doing an hourly rate, just a salary to give some it flexibility. It is an exempt position, yeah. so I mentioned that to them. 
So what were your thoughts, Trevor? I mean, you, I know what I heard, but yeah. tell people what you think. Well, I, th I think it was, you know, I, I feel good with the, the way it's structured. I think that um, there's accountability and participation and the, um, I, I like that the, that we will be, we set it up that the, it was to the assigned um, town administrator, which we will assign Deerfield at this time. Um, I, and I think, and then the chair of the BOO, because I think it does still, you know, the other towns wanted some input in, you know, uh, in management of, of the director and, and not just be the town. And it doesn't Deerfield. have to be me. It, 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 correct. That's not, that's not and it. So we may move it to Sunderland at some time or wait to another time. But so that's why we what, But the difference class. here is it says coordinates all board of oversight activities, meetings, minutes, and other assignments. Exactly. Because that's what key. happens before is that it was always generated from us to you to the senior center. And, right. and what happens is people don't understand that how much work and effort was going into the seniors and that it was just dropped. Right. So we need right. we need to have the senior center director be yeah. the initiator to make sure that the boo is in, incorporated and that any of the energy or projects or stuff that's happening on the select board level gets to the seniors because right. I, I mean I hitting I my head against the wall constantly was really an irritant. I think I think I think and that's trying set to get now, and I think they yeah, that, but seeing, that but seeing that, that as an essential function, and it saying is. that it is part of your job to initiate it and not fight fight what you're trying to do and encourage job, uh, you know, or program expansion and all that. I mean, it was I have to say it was a hundred percent irritating. I think we're so. This is a, this is right I think we're in good shape. I think this is much better, well written, and that was why I was really excited to see this. It, it includes things that we didn't, that I didn't see in the old job description. Right. And it also brings it back to the format that Deerfield will use. Um, I'm hoping yeah. from now on, no, I mean, I it's a good so format. It does. It it's a little good. bit easier to read. But one thing that we discussed when we were talking to them was the hiring process yeah. and so what the town administrator suggested and this got fleshed out a bit was a search committee to then bring finalists to both the board of oversight and the select board at joint meeting perfect and then it'll be the coa one person from each coa and the three town administrators and so will, we just want you to serve. bless this because i think i'm fine with that yeah yeah, I, I, people in an right. interview with I'm not manager. trying to be overbearing, but right. I just it's very frustrating to, you know, we weren't getting anywhere with well, I think right now we're, a lot we've of initiatives set up where the three town administrators yep. are working really closely together, and and I think take the input from the COA, yeah. come up with a pool, send a couple people forward to our board and the boo, and we'll you know we'll see what we have. Yeah, so, I think it'll be great. So what I would like the board and and I said this to the guys. Um, if the board's okay with this hiring process, we would have a member of each, one member of each COA, so Sunderland, Wheatley, and Deerfield, and the three town administrators do the search using the vacancy, because we have to maintain confidentiality in, in the beginning of the process. Once we get to the finalists, then it becomes public information. And that's one of the reasons we thought it would be useful for us to... What's the timeline on the um, UMass or that group that we're hiring to do the assessment. So John and I were talking about that. We haven't circled John Pachurk and I because he had got reached out and gotten some information. Um, I, I am about to send him an email about it. I remembered. He's on vacation. He's on vacation. That's why. <laughs> so we have to decide. I asked him to reach out so we could figure out who to contact about the, cert, the um, survey piece of it. The issue, and this came up yesterday, is we allocated funds directly. Wheatley and Sunderland didn't. They were hoping the DTLA would do it. They were hoping that the COG would do it, would provide some of that, and that didn't happen. So how we proceed, yeah. how we proceed may, be have, may have to be either through a grant process or have Deerfield take the lead and have them fund it in some way. We did sort of make that clear. Are they having we special, it. Are they have special town meetings? Do you know? I don't know. I haven't really gotten into that with them because that was the first opportunity we had to sort of 
throw it on the table. I think that's that's the key that the person that we hire be involved in that because that is going to be the person, you know, whatever information is coming out of there, we want that person to go after those kind of programs. And so we actually, we added that. I mean, we added I, we've that. been bugging and bugging so and bugging point. about programs. So one bullet point here that's important that I drew the boo's attention to is advocates and facilitates the senior center, senior center building development. Because in my experience in the Hill Towns where they had a regional senior center and they had a building development project in play, the senior center director played a huge facilitation role in that. So it's important to identify that as a goal in a job description. Absolutely. And because the survey is yeah. part of that process. So once John and I have a chance to connect, I think we can consider how to move forward. It's just... I don't want to have too much pressure on Deerfield. On the other hand, if we can start to facilitate the survey process in some fashion, it will help the overall just, goal of providing services better. Casey, it's just frustrating that there aren't more programs, and it looks like we're ramping up with COVID again. Right. And we, so we need to get this out. We need to have some more flexibility with our programs. So let's right. get going. And I mean, I will say, just, I'm just going to give a shout out here. Sue Corey has really been helping. I know. Wonderful. Um, she's been great. And I did it at the Boo meeting last night, and I'll do it again here. She's been so helpful. If she's a problem. She calls us. We try to do what we can to help as soon as we can. Yeah. Um, and she's working on program development. Perfect. And, and that's really one of the things that I think at least the town administrators and I, and I noticed that, you know, while before the Delta variant came in and just punched everybody in the face, mm -hmm. um, that was the, the plan is to develop things. And there's already programs that had started under the tent. So I think whatever we do that can help facilitate that in terms of space is only going to make it easier. But we do have to keep moving on this, mm -hmm. this particular activity. So how we work that out with the other two towns, we're going to have to talk about. That's fine with me. So we could move forward with the... Um, okay. Steve, so the personnel mean? board does have to approve this and the right. range, and their next meeting is the 23rd. Um, but I know it's a critical piece to running the just put this in center. and then run that by the personnel board. And I, if we have, I mean, it's only a couple of weeks, so if, we, if they need to make a change on that, fine, and make a change on that. But we need to, we need to get the. I would make a motion put it to in the paper. So I would make a motion start. to put I it in the I paper. I normally do that. I don't like to do that. Personnel board should weigh in on this. Of course. But I know but we have a critical need there. It is this within been, the this scope. Been, it's not like we're asking for anything that wouldn't be out of the norm on this. So I, I just feel like to get the ads going, then if we've got to adjust something, fine. Uh, I feel, I mean, I, I just ask the personnel board to be understanding of the fact that we have a situation where it's been vacant mm -hmm. and um, we need to fill it. And it's this bad. isn't unlike every other we have two vacancies out there right now, and we're not getting responses. And so that was a, a particular detail that I mentioned at the meeting. Yeah, we need to get. We, we need to make it just like going. just like we made some changes, and the personnel board thanked their, thanked them right. because they made some adjustments for these other positions. And so mm -hmm. we need to be flexible, and I think they'll be understanding. But I just yeah. want people to understand that I, I would if rather it wasn't yeah. a critical need. I wouldn't normally. I would. I would rather have them be mad at us. Well, it's just that they're on vacation, and I think that again, we're not asking for a range outside of what would normally be there. So I, that's why I just feel like. Okay. Well, you can come to the snow board. I'll be happy to. <laughs> I would be happy to, and I think you'll understand that we need to get somebody. I know. If you just better. apologize, that we're yeah. not trying to be. But we need to move ahead. I don't on. want to step on toes. No, me either. This, this has been vacant for a long time. Because you? it isn't so. sustainable yeah. under the current Management. model. Yeah, we, just, we can't so continue. So it can calm me down. We'll get there. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. I will let everybody know. Mm -hmm. And I think each town administrator is going to contact their COA. Yeah, that'd be great to get okay. this going. Um, you have I know we got the. Do we get a map for the town um, culvert? Um, I did not see. A map. I think we got some we pictures. Got this is the executive there. summary, the bigger report. She's going to give to me on a stick, a memory stick. Um, can could you? But I wanted you to have that so you could read it. Okay. 
Could you just print out the um, map for us eventually when you get a map? They should have included a map. And can it be merged or ask them to merge it with the existing map that we already have of the north end of town? We have the north end of town culverts already on a map. It's in the office. And we need to merge it with the ones that they're coming up with. So we have one map for the town. Okay. This will be the basis of us being able to get, um, you know, funding mul over multiple years here. So it's critical we have a good map. Okay, I will ask Nathan. And the intent is essentially to try to pull this information into the GIS system, but that's right. a function that Ryan and um, the folks in the that work with the software and the uh, public works will have to mm -hmm. manage. And I don't know how that works, but Megan said the same thing. Ryan can work with them on that. Yeah, no, but that, it's important to make sure we have that because that's how you fill in for grants. Right. And then you just have to download, you know, you just download it every time. And that's how also you track the maintenance of it. You know, the culvert so you can show maintenance and stuff. Kevin should have the software that will download all the condition of the, of the, of the culvert. I think the asset manager software part, does. Right. Yeah. And, and mm -hmm. so what happens is as he cleans out each culvert, he needs to update that line item in his um, software and then that is the record that like we would submit to FEMA if we had an, a, a FEMA uh, kind of event. Those are the records that they're looking for. So Kevin needs to coordinate with um, Ryan Clear. Yeah, one, okay. Yeah, that's what, she, that's what Megan said. Kevin has the software. Ryan has the capability to download it, and it just needs to be updated to like a baseline, and then Kevin can work from there. Okay. But that's what information you're going to have to feed FEMA or related stuff. Okay. All right. So we had two items unanticipated. One came in late yesterday afternoon, and the other was. I don't see any issue with the police officer thing. I don't know how we missed that. Um, it was actually a change they made on the floor. Okay. So during their discussion at the legislature, it was a change they made on the, the floor. What the board needs to do is approve the language and. Um, okay. Agree that they want it to be to take it to take effect upon passage. Okay. So this is the police maximum age Carac amendment. Yes. Yeah. The board and, um, right now. the Green Communities Grant Extension. You want a motion on that? Yes, please. I make the motion we um, sign the grant extension, and, or have That's Dave sign it. Dave, yeah, David. I'll, I'll second that. Have David sign the extension. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Uh, I, Carolyn Ness. I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfman. Do, do you need a motion on the floor amendment as well? Yes. Do, give me a motion on the floor make amendment a, just in case you need to. Make it. a motion to um, approve the floor amendment for um, extending the um, years of so retirement age. Officers retirement age 70 for Robert uh, Barber, uh, Joseph Michnowski, and Raymond Bernetsky. I will second that. And thank them Any very much for their service. Yes. We have the legislation take effect upon and passage. And have the legislation take effect upon passage. Mm. Uh, I second it. And thank them again I for, just, for I their just service. Make sure, no, I just want to make sure we yeah, get we in there in case somebody has an issue. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and... All those in favor? Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Dave Wolf. I, it's really nice that they are willing to do this. Yep. And, can I just make a shout out to uh, Natalie, yeah. Joe Comerford, Elena, who's 
Joe's assistant and Corinne, who's Natalie's assistant, they have been amazing. They're great staff. They're great. They they're are wonderful. responsive. Mm -hmm. You know, they just, they're amazing. No, they really are. Quick email solved the problem for yeah. us. And I know they're pushing they're... along our other legislative requests. So as soon as we hear about that, I'll let you know. Um, right. When Joe was at the, um, at, at the Richardson's Candy Kitchen, she brought up that we were going to try to do meeting at Stillwater Bridge. Can you just follow up on that? I had a discussion, too, with DOT and um, to have it start our meeting back down there again. So well, now that COVID is flying back. But anyways, to get that stuff going, we could talk about, you know, what's well, going on Well, it's just the, the only bridge. reason I was nervous is because, um, you know, once the design is set, we can't, you can't make, make you can, can't make changes, right. and I haven't heard anything for probably six months or more. Yeah. And the last time I requested that the bridge be one way, open one way, because it will have such a negative impact on like Savage's right. Farm, Clarkdale, but also just the bus route. Right. I mean, and the bus route fire. will add and and fire and EMS and all everything. So, I know it is more expensive. We have to. I mean, it's our bridge. And they're fixing it, so we can't complain too much. We've got to be nice about it. But uh, you know, the, to have it closed for three years yeah, it is wicked tough. tough. Yeah. And so, if if we can just ask them to spend the extra money to to do it, so we have one lane open, we'll make a huge difference. So I just I'm trying to be nice about it. I'm not trying to be whiny. Buns, yeah, well, I've, I'll make a lot of sticky buns because it's me that's impacted, let me tell you. <laughs> a commitment for sticky buns. I hope we all heard that. No, no, we had some the other day. No. 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 Priority. No. I, just, yeah. I just, having that bridge shut down is, is really, um, I'm on the other end of the town. So, it, you know, for me, come the other way is probably just another yeah, five but minutes. If you're, if you're but if you're on way. Lower Road or on the other end of the... It depends if you're at your winter house or your summer yeah. house. <laughs> <laughs> but, let me tell you, it's really, I mean, it can add 30 minutes sometimes for some of the people oh, that sure. are, oh, yeah. you know, no to doubt. go all the way up and then around. Like traffic and come all the way down. Yeah, right. No doubt. Oh, so, I mean, I, I already know what the phone calls would be because remember we closed the bridge when we had Irene and yes. people were... Oh, it was a nightmare. People were having a fit about it being closed and the bus, we had to have the bus rerouted for just only two weeks. And Greenfield took over, you know, EMS response and stuff. Oh, and yeah. fire. I mean, oh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, crazy. yeah. I remember. Three years of I'm fully insured, but still. I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really, it's nice to have our own fire department and our own EMS. Yeah. And I thank the other communities oh, for stepping up. Oh, they were wonderful. Up, they were but, wonderful to help. You know, yeah, they're yeah. already, everybody is stretched. And then to take us on for three years isn't too onerous of a thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. if your house starts burning, we're going to need more than two fire departments. <laughs> <laughs> so just get to the first floor. <laughs> you may not want to go. Carolyn's house is amazing. I have it's incredible. Anyway. All right. Well, I will um, make a motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All right. <laughs> we're, we're... Any further discussion? No, we're no. going. Trevor says, I'm on vacation. <laughs> Get the late five. Quickly. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Carolyn Duff. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Thank you all. Thanks Thank for you. joining. Thanks, Jennifer.